though. There's nothing that says SoCal can't run you through John Wayne's airspace. They just have to get a point out with me first. So they, the FAA has said in writing that it is the, the pilot is liable in Charlie's and Delta's. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's like, we, we, I just watched, um, this, this pilotage video that kind of explains it. So I've got it up on stream right here. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, so this, um, yeah, I don't know what the hell this, what is this circulatory? Is that what that's called? Uh, yeah. the grand B interpretation. <laughs> um, yeah. So where, uh, let's see, the operator of the aircraft would be in violation of section uh, 91130 in the hypothetical um, under, uh, under section uh, 913, the pilot in command is directly responsible for and is the final authority as to the operation of the aircraft. The receipt of traffic advisories from the center or any other ATC facility does not relieve the pilots of the responsibility of section 913. Okay, so I'm reading the yeah the first part here. Each person must establish two-way radio communications with the ATC uh, facility providing air traffic services prior to entering that airspace. Okay, I get that. That's the rule, right? Like, for you to come on the Charlie, you have to establish two-way communication. Now, anything's possible with coordination, and that's why it happens behind the scenes and why this interpretation, whoever came up with this responded to this this query is i would consider wrong but if this is what the agency is going to go off i would say it's pretty uh for lack of a better term fucked up because it's wrong <laughs> um it is because while yes you're supposed to establish two-way communication you are communicating with let's just use john wayne and socal right so you're still talking to socal they fly you through my airspace they have to get that point out with me if you don't like you're not just gonna switch to talk to me like if you're just planning on transitioning the airspace and you're not landing at john wayne that's up to socal if you fly through my airspace at an altitude that i own and i'm not talking to you and socal never coordinated with me i'm not coming after you i'm coming after socal because they screwed up right and that's kind of what i was like imagining the situation like if you so okay now take that same airplane and and transition your airspace at the altitude that you own and you're nordo not talking to anybody the, the only the the very first thing you're gonna do is contact socal and say hey are you are you talking to this guy that's at you know 4500 or whatever right because they're probably gonna call me already and be like hey this guy's not answering me did he switch to you because that happens sometimes yeah you know I, some people do switch you know prematurely or unintentionally or whatever you know yeah. they need to monitor but they're they switch um you know so it's i don't like this interpretation of the rule because to me and i think most controllers you talk to wouldn't agree with it the problem with faa legal is it's a bunch of people that either washed out or just have no idea how air traffic actually works yeah, and I, I guess the like with that being said, it's still their legal direction and therefore could be used against the pilot in that situation. I not having been in this situation or even remotely close to being in this situation, and with my extremely limited experience like with legality and you know the FAA and all that kind of stuff it's hard for me to imagine a practical scenario where this gets you busted because you are and I understand like I understand the legality the technical legality of of what this letter is stating but from a practical standpoint you're going to be at a relatively safe altitude but inside the airspace and talking to somebody so therefore you're kind of already making yourself in a you're putting yourself not in harm's way and being watched by somebody voluntarily i can't see how that really ends in someone being so mad that you get violated yeah uh so i mean th this has happened several times you know either at John Wayne or Santa Barbara or whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, like and that I, bonanza guy that just came barreling through. I yeah, remember. Like, I can guarantee you that every time it's happened and every time in the future that this will happen, we're not even thinking about you. We're going after the other facility. Like, what are you doing? Why did you violate my airspace kind of thing? Unless you're just a flat out airspace violator. You haven't been talking to anybody to begin with and you're just flying through every airspace known to man. Yeah, we're going to go after you. But if you're tagged up from SoCal and you're yeah. transitioning, you know, through my airspace or whatever, you know, SoCal's either going to coordinate with me and it's cool. And if they don't coordinate with me, I don't care about you. I'm going after SoCal and putting the blame on them. Yeah, because I'm I'm in that situation. Oh, no, I'm like in that situation, that plane, like you're going to know pretty quick if they're if they've got a code or if they don't have a code. Right. Yeah, it's like, I mean, because if, if you're not talking to anybody and you're just flying VFR, you're just a little speck on the screen, right? You have no information. I can click on you, and as long as you're running ADSB, which everybody is, right, then yeah. uh, then I can see, you know, the the call sign associated with the, the, the ADSB code. Um, but if you are being provided air traffic services, then you have a full data, uh, full data block, you know, I can see everything on you, so... <laughs> Brad, I wonder how fast you could bust all different kinds of controlled airspace. Yeah, I mean, like, we're in the perfect spot to be able to go from, like, um, like Burbank. Burbank would be a good one. You could go Van Nuys, Burbank, and then pop over right into the Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You could hit a lot real quick. Yeah. So, and I guess from... And this this is kind of similar to a lot of the different things that we talk about with communication and with, with ATC as you're flying around is the level of effort required to make this be a non-issue is so low. It's almost irresponsible to not do it. And it's, it makes all of this conversation to me kind of pointless. How often are you in the situation where you're having to transition a con you know a, a, a terminal airspace while on flight following it's not really that often so if you find yourself in a uh you know in a um what's the word i'm looking for um you know a direction of flight that intersect intersection where you're intersecting that airspace and you're going to you're going to intersect it just Hey, just want to check if I'm cleared through Riverside. Hey, just want to check if I'm cleared through whatever. Like, it takes absolutely no effort. Yeah, I would say best practice, that's probably good. Just be like, hey, should should I call John Wayne or whatever? And that puts, that there puts everything on the the controller, you know, providing service. Yeah. Because then ask. they have, you, you have two you, possible answers, right? You have, uh -huh. yes, you're cleared or no, stay clear. Right. And I have now, as the pilot, clear, determine, uh, you know, clear con confirmation of what my next step is. Proceed, yeah, so a, proceed as is, or climb up five hundred feet. Yeah, because I feel like this is, yeah, you, like you said, it's not a situation you would find too often. Which is why you guys transitioning around John Wayne are always getting pushed offshore, right? And we have to stop all our departures at three thousand. So some. Mm, yeah, right. that I can put through the departure corridor at yeah. 3500 right so um, for whatever reason they just they don't do a lot of overflights with us but when they do they get the coordination like yeah. I said I don't like the FAA's interpretation of this rule because it's just flat out wrong the way they interpret it Yeah. Um, but I would say the chances of like even if you are receiving services you fly through my airspace without SoCal getting coordination the chances of you taking the fall for that is gonna be very low unless it causes an issue with something else because i don't i mean you know between you know drew me and al we could probably tell you a hundred stories of how we probably should violate pilots but we don't because nothing happened right like you bust a hold bar okay don't do it again right like stuff like that but if you do it and there's somebody 50 feet off your wing when you do it, then yeah, we're probably gonna violate you. But if it's like nothing's happening and you do it, it's, you know, slap on the wrist, don't do it again. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess like it really just comes down to literally the time and and the the what happens after right. the violation. Yeah. If, if you it's... just go through and nothing happens, I would say you 
99% probably don't have to worry about anything because like I said, SoCal's not thinking about it and I'm not thinking about it. We're going after each other. We're not going after you. Yeah. Um. Hmm. All right. Captain Dark on. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Yeah, it, it's it's. I think the problem is as as flight following is taught, there is a, a um, aspect of it where get flight following and other than Bravos, you don't really have to worry about much. And all, mm -hmm. while while technically, as far as ATC regulations go, that is true. As far as the pilot's regulations are concerned, it's not technically true. Right. And that, you know, the other half... Telephone check. <laughs> like the other, Yeah, the, the other half of the, the world I deal with, you know, is far less familiar to me, right? Like, I'm very well versed, I consider it at least on the controller side. The pilot side, you know, that's, you know, pretty foreign to me still. I know some stuff, but I don't know nearly as much as i i know about the controlling side um and i saw somebody up a ways i forget who it is but said that it uh, it always seems like they find a way to put the blame on the pilot and i would say it depends on what happens you know like i said if you just bust airspace because you're talking to socal and they didn't coordinate with me we're probably not going to even be looking at you but if you quote unquote violate it because they never coordinated with me and they never switched you off whatever it be and now there's near midair kind of thing with somebody else then yeah they're probably going to look at you you know it's just like I said it's somebody busts the whole bar nobody's around don't do it again somebody busts the whole bar with traffic short short final we're going to violate you you know so it's yeah it's it's, uh, it's, it's almost like and, and like you, what you just said was interesting like the, the pilot side of things um like we're as and i think these conversations really really help we're as unaware of your side of things as you're unaware you know of, of our side of things it's far more likely that a controller is going to have pilot experience and a pilot's going to have controller experience but yeah. just from the like a flight planning perspective we're talking about largely 2000 agl so like as far as deltas go it's almost like if in my mind from a practical standpoint if if i'm a vfr pilot on flight following going through controlled airspace it's in a controlled um uh what's what's what i'm looking for it, it's 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 not erratic like it is a like I have planned my flight. I am cruising at fifteen hundred feet for some stupid fucking reason that and it dissects and I'm I'm crossing over, you know, the center line of an airport or I'm cutting the corner of some delta. You know, like it's it's a conscious decision that I am making under the assumption that ATC is going to that I'm allowed to do that. So it's just like a weird it, I'm that's kind of I think what's the barrier for me to find fault in the pilot because you are electing to be on flight following and you're going to not do anything too wacky. Mhm. Mm yeah, well I, I know Brad and I'm trying I'm trying not to think of it in like our specific situations where we do a lot of like local low level stuff just because one you've got a bravo shelf over you um and you know like um john wayne to uh, el monte is a good example i mean i, I think whatever altitude we use you know 3000 msl is perfectly fine and we don't need to you know go any lower than that really um but you know you could you could go from fullerton to torrance um where you're going through long beach potentially uh you could go to you know uh torrance to chino and go through fullerton's delta like there are those flights that um you absolutely will will could potentially have a conflicting altitude transitioning but like in in general i'm thinking of like just the national airspace in general 
that's not really happening a whole lot. I feel like this, you know, Dave, you're probably going to cringe, but like SoCal is probably a little bit more used to and a little bit more adept at making those calls and being a little bit more active than, you know, out in the sticks where there's some Delta and the guy, you know, the, the center controller is just asleep and doesn't want to have to call, you know, the wherever. Yeah. So I see Shaq asked a question there and I'll answer that real quick. How do we actually coordinate with each other? So <clears throat> Every facility, well, I don't want to say every facility is different. We're all, you know, 99% of the coordinations happen this way, where on my radio panel in the tower, I have a button that I can push. And it's a direct shout line. As soon as I hit it, anything I say is coming out of speaker at SoCal. So I have a button for the approach side. If I need to call approach, be like, hey, what the hell are you doing putting these guys a mile apart? Like, break them out, you know, kind of thing, or ask for whatever i can call them and I have another one that gets me to the departure side same way and on the flip side still has a button on their radio panel that comes straight into the tower same thing shout line as soon as they hit it they can start talking to us so is that going to the you know, soup like is obviously no, someone it, has it to... comes it comes through the way it's set up those it comes out the speaker at local control um because they're going to be the ones doing these coordinations most likely um on I the still headset have to, or on an, an actual like speaker like speaker, it's separate like a like a separate loudspeaker okay so it's, it's, it's separated from gear. the regular traffic yes yeah, so yeah. if i'm you know balls of the wall busy working local you still have to hit a button in order to like pick up the line and talk back to socal if i'm too busy to do that i, I could tell the soup or i could tell you know whoever's working grounder or cd to hey pick that up and and coordinate for me because we all should basically know whether to approve or deny or you know coordinate accordingly depending on what's going on uh but basically socal will call over if, if you know if bill's transitioning the airspace they'll call over you know it, john wayne shore i answer and be like five miles to the east you know uh five three one seven six wants to transition through at 2500 and all i say is point out approved you know uh, and then that's it. Coordination's done. They can keep control of you and fly you through the airspace. And it's my responsibility to separate anybody that I'm talking to from you. There's a second way that we can coordinate non-verbally. Uh, and so any facility that has stars, which I think everybody's running stars now, uh, at least they should be, uh, they can flash your tag at me as long as, you know, so let's say you're flying from the Signal Peak side and they've got... Uh, LGB in your flight flight mm -hmm. plan or your your data block like so I know you're going to Long Beach if they flash you at me I can just click on your tag to steady the flash it shows on their end that I've accepted it and now you can fly through uh and that's a nonverbal coordination and same thing I'm responsible for separation on my end from you know not spearing you with somebody else that I'm talking to they do it all the time for like the arrivals into Long Beach, if they're trying to descend them early, they'll flash all those carriers uh, to us without having to call for each one. So, Yeah, do the, does that arrival, um, as it's published, go through your airspace? Uh, I think on the very far west side, it will start to clip it. Now, Brad, you know, said, send me over the top of 2500 and stop Long Beach Disney arrivals at 4,000, right? Versus sending you guys offshore and stopping my all jet departures at 3,000 because I'm sure they love stopping at 3,000 and buzzing a Cessna at the shoreline, right? At, you know, 500 feet separation, assuming your altimeter and your mode C readout's correct, um, which is stupid, right? Because I don't, I don't know on the pilot side if it's the same, but for us, you know, there's a plus or minus 300 foot readout of your mode C where you're still technically good. You know, if you only have 500 feet separation, but there's a total of 600 foot play there and at the uh, crossing point at the shoreline. So it's kind of like, uh, somebody's going to lose this at some point, but, uh, okay. There you go. Brad says it shouldn't ever clip because it bottoms out at 4,000 in my airspace, but Yes, I think it's more probably more for the visuals they're getting them set up or something. Or we have a lot of arrivals, you know, that come in on the left downwind there, so they're probably trying to get these guys lower under the downwind for uh, for our stuff. But you know, we've brought up the suggestion, like, why can't you just fly, you know, the little guys, fly you guys over the tower, um, 
at 2500 or whatever you know yeah. we don't care fly over the, the top and stop stopping our departures and they're like well what if we get a rival to long beach like then don't fucking descend them into the overflight like <laughs> i don't i don't know you know maybe separate traffic like a controller like it doesn't seem that hard you know so it's uh it's a real point of contention between our facilities still it, it's been i mean you know i was at john wayne the first time back in 08 and even back then it was a point of contention so it's uh yeah it's and that mind-boggling like, how little work they want to do to make the most money in the agency and it's just like you guys are really pissing me off <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's like we live in such a unique area for um aviation you know like airspace is just an absolute disaster and you know the traffic levels and the coordination and everything it's really hard for a lot of these concepts to hold up to the scrutiny of the differences that socal provides but it also needs to be somewhat applicable to so many different types of situations you know i'm just imagining being out in you know kansas with brad you know cruising over the cornfields at 1500 feet or whatever and you know being on flight following or on center or whatever i know technically you know you might not get radio coverage down that low in those places but you know just whatever like you know it's it's probably never ever going to be an issue to cross over some sleepy delta's airspace or you know go through some sleepy delta's airspace while you're on with center um mm -hmm. because they don't care there's no conflict and whatever they're not gonna they're not gonna give a crap whether the the center controller coordinates that or not likewise with us it's almost the exact opposite issue where it's so busy where if you see a plane that's got a code that's clipping your airspace, what, who cares? Like, you know, like, you know, they're on flight following, you know, SoCal's not doing their job and there's no conflict and, and whatever. It's like those middle areas um, where it's just busy enough to be an issue and not busy enough for the controllers to, to like have the time to do something about it. Um, that, seem to be the edge cases in um you know like these bulletins and crap mm -hmm. yeah and oh. Brad, yeah you're right like we actually did kind of do that uh, you know the, the coordination of um these approaches that we did like close to you know, these air i don't i, I don't rem i don't have the the chart up but yeah there was like some of that where it's very sleepy deltas and we're like hey we're gonna do a 180 mile per hour uh approach into hutchinson and let us in you know like they don't give a crap because we're the only air airplane within 50 miles um <laughs> we woke the poor guy up but it's just it's and kind of cl like closing the loop on on where this kind of comes from as in terms of like pilot edges um viewpoint of it where you're very much going to the letter of the law and trying to have a training environment be just that an environment where you're training on the regulations um it really i think can make it seem and i think we've seen some of that confusion in the chat where it you, you're you're initially being told one thing then you're being told that that's not a hundred percent true and then going back to well it's a little bit less true than than you think it's not a good system yeah <laughs> it's not a good it's not a good system poor poor dave is just going fucking crazy up there <laughs> just like oh my god and again i have I have comparatively very, very little experience with just the observation, you know, like pilots like Brad who have 4,000 hours um, of not necessarily being at the receiving end of any of this, but seeing stuff like I, I've had, I have one specific um, uh, situation that I, I remember we were in. And I think it actually was with, brad um where we were in oh was it brad or q it may have actually been q um we were up in the high desert um uh, brad doesn't matter 
um, somebody was like a thousand feet AGL going. What's what's the one with the with the airplane graveyard? Um, Victorville. Uh, Is that what I'm thinking? I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking yeah, of Victorville. Victorville right? Yeah, like um, this guy was at a thousand feet, and it must have been Brad. And it's like, just goes right through the Delta. Just no fucks given, straight through it, not talking to anyone. The, you know, the, could, the tower is trying to call this guy, like, nonstop. And I think we even, like, spied on the guy for the tower and said, hey, it was a Mooney. And, you know, just, in, it, you know, like, we relayed something back to him. And he goes, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> like, the dude... Full on VFR goes just YOLOs right through Victorville's airspace, and the guy was like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> yeah, and see, that's what—that's the stuff I'm talking about. Like, if you're just straight up violating airspace, then yeah, that's an instance where you will take the blame for that, and you will get violated. Yeah, um, yeah. He was know, 1,200, we... not answering. Just that's it. Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, because we can tag you up even if you're squawking VFR. Not talking to anybody. We can tag you up manually with the violator tag, and we'll follow you all the way to the point you land, right? Yeah. So, and then have that airport ops find you and give you the number to call. Um, yeah, Shaq, it's done. There's like classifications based on volume of airports, and then there's a um, there's what's a whole convoluted calculation. That what's the index? Work what's for the, the majority? Like, the location the, index what is that called well that's for locality there's locality there's, yeah, yeah yeah there's the complexity the traffic complexity index though um basically fa facilities go from level four which is like monterey or something you know very slow traffic to level 12 which is you know denver Atlanta. dfw socal tracon la is a 12 but they're getting downgraded to an 11 for some reason um, well, actually, I know the reason, but they're getting downgraded to an 11. Um, is it is it like a inside baseball reason? No, it's just the the traffic count is down because since you know post COVID, the flights, the continental flights, like a flight to Miami that would fly seven threes back and forth all day or Airbuses, they're flying seven eights and triple sevens now, so they're running fewer flights. But oh. moving the same amount or more people, right? Huh. So, so their their physical traffic counts down while their passenger counts still up or even higher. They're just flying bigger planes within the U.S., which is hurting oh. their traffic counts. So, this is the problem with the complexity index: is they will find a loophole or make another caveat, and LA will go back to a twelve, and all the controllers there. Who are already making level 12 pay because they're going to keep the pay when they go to 11 yeah will get another raise when they go back to 12. so it they're not they're not complaining you know it only hurts new people that are going there because they start at a lower number but the cap of an 11 with our locality still hits the congressional federal employee cap so they'll still make just as much you know depending on how long they are they'll still hit the same high-end number whereas john wayne on paper, we're just listed as we're listed as a single runway airport it's because a seven, that has, right? we're an eight. We are okay. listed as a single runway airport because that's technically more complexity than the dual parallels or whatever with the traffic or the traffic numbers we're running. But that's it. That's the only complexity we have. It doesn't take into account the four thousand runway crossings we have to do a day. <laughs> you know, or the pattern or none of that stuff. None of that's taken into consideration. So we're just a little le sleepy level eight VFR tower. And, you know, you and Brad and anybody else local knows that John Wayne's anything but that. But yeah. to the agency, per the bullshit complexity index we have, that's that's what we're doing. So the approach controllers won out when they decided to make the super Tracons, you know? Um, they decided to combine everything into SoCal Tracon or NorCal Tracon, you know, or all across the country. They, they took all the small approach facilities and put them in the mega facilities. They all became level 12. 
It doesn't matter what sector you're working in, whether you're doing technically level 12 traffic or not, they look at the facility as a whole. So there's plenty of people at approach controls and even centers that work way less traffic than I work and they make way more money than I do. Yeah, but you have a much better view. Oh yeah, no, listen, like I've worked approach I don't like working in approach. It has its moments where it's fun. You know, it has its own set of complications and stuff, but I prefer tower. I love the chaos within a five mile radius of my position. You know, I like looking out the window. I like seeing the airplanes. It's just, yeah. it's much better for me. Um, and Dave, no, at least our towers, not most towers should be back open for visits at this point. Yeah, is the um, the the roadblock is still in place? Yeah, so we're uh, we're we're up and running. So yeah, if you're ever out here, get a hold of Bill or whatever, and he he knows how to make it happen. Yeah, sweet. Thank you, Flockstrot, for the the raid. What is up? Um, yeah, that's. I'm glad we had this conversation because it, it is I, I wanted to get your opinion on this for a while. And I just like, you know, it's not really that big of an issue to me or doesn't come up that often that, you know, I, I think to bring it up. But yeah. it is and it that, is a weird it's in that like weird gray area of practical versus regulatory technically, you know, kind of zone that. And that's the problem. Like you you know, being a logical thinking person in this federal government environment is is not thought well of, right? Like, like I said, I was 100%, like that's the controller's fault. That's, you know, you have nothing to worry about, whatever. But then somebody at FA Legal who washed out of a level four tower because they're fucking stupid has this bug up their ass now that just wants to take it out on the pilots. This is 100%, in my opinion, bad bad interpretation of the rule it literally says two-way communication which you're talking to sell caltrake on when you fly through my airspace it's not up to you to decide who you're going to talk to at that point so it's and like i said if you ask 100 controllers i would be willing to bet a big amount of money that all 100 would say the same thing you know what, what like that that's a good point i looking at this calls into question even this like they they don't offer a solution like a clear enough solution that would then make it um uh make this interpretation make sense from a safety perspective right they they, they don't say hey if you're talking to to you know tracon and you're approaching an airspace and you haven't been told that you're cleared through which which again i don't think is even legally needed is it like only bravo you need to be legal like you need to hear you are cleared through right right yeah because Bravo's a whole different beast right? yeah like, so be that so guy in you, vegas that says no i'm i'm already here like yeah like the more i think about it the more annoying this becomes because there's no alternative to what they're saying is your responsibility other than the well you know what i would do is ask who you're already on with but you could read this and some people have interpreted it this way well what are you supposed to do call up the tower like leave leave tracon call the tower for the transition like absolutely not that's right. not safe at all um and, and I'm, so i'm reading the letter again i mean and, and it says right here you know like uh, indicates requirement to contract the air traffic control facility charged with managing specific class Charlie airspace or whether contact with any ATC, ATC facility would suffice. The answer is that the regulation requires the operator contact the specific AT facility responsible for the class Charlie airspace in question. In the case of class Charlie airspace, that facility is the Tracon. <laughs> so I was like, I don't understand. Like this is like I said, this is some idiot that washed out a facility and is so bitter at that fact they became legal and just make bad rulings on stuff to try to take it out on pilot. Yeah. Or, or like be so pedantic to prove you're worth anything. <laughs> right. 
Like they just it's it's a hundred percent a bad interpretation. Yeah. Um just saw a YouTube video that a pilot did a tower to tower communication, then went back to approach center. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's down to who who you're who you've got on the other side of the radio. So they could drop like that's happened to me where you just get dropped from flight following and say, hey, they're going to coordinate your transition. Call up Riverside Tower or whatever. Right. Call up or like Long flying Beach into tower. Camarillo, right? Magoo drops you all the time, right? Because they don't want to work you so magoo terminates you all the time right yeah and it's just then you call up the tire whatever but um fox actually you know if you're making a joke or whatever get a second opinion that's kind of what you know bill if since you just got here kind of mentioned is if you're getting close to a charlie or a delta and you're talking to a approach with fight falling like it can't hurt to be like hey should i call john wayne tower or stay with you and you get yeah. a solid answer out of them and that in my again this is in my mind and i think in most same controllers minds that puts any issue on that controller if they don't get the point out or not and you fly through a charlie with when they didn't coordinate like but again i think logically and that doesn't work well in this job so it's just it's stupid yeah and then the problem that i have with that isn't that it is uh unreasonable to ask for transition approval or receive transition approval or have that coordination happen it's the fact that they're that then you're essentially just you know what bravo delta charlie you need you need uh you need to be cleared through it every single time right like just just say that like if that's if that's the like a better solution than to have to or to me i let me rephrase that to me that's a better solution than hanging over the potential of of violating 91 130 because uh, atc didn't train didn't pick up the phone yeah like and you hear how stupid that sounds atc didn't pick up the phone to coordinate you're in trouble like right which again is fine but the standard should then be you need to be cleared into a Delta or Charlie airspace while you're on flight following. Right. It's then then it becomes absolutely no different than Bravo other than weather minimums or whatever the else crap, you know, like. Right. It's essentially the same thing. Steer clear of controlled airspace unless you're cleared into it. Yeah. Which is why? what they don't want, which is why the different airspaces exist to begin with, right? So it's yeah. Like, so so yeah so why hang that that potential violation over pilots heads because now you're going to force extra communication over the frequency that you were in theory trying to mitigate by having those airspace differences to begin with yeah that's it's dumb and it's, you're right the class charlie thing is extra stupid because i have to talk to them anyway before entering like terminating the flight there Right. I can transition your airspace and never talk to you. I need to talk to you if I'm going to land there. And in both cases, I need to talk to Tracon before going in. Right. Because they're required to sequence you, right? Yeah. So, so why? Like, ugh, that makes my freaking brain hurt, dude. All right. Well, that was a, that was a good... That was a good discussion. I, I, I unfortunately feel like we didn't get any further. <laughs> well, because... It doesn't make sense. This is a terrible, terrible interpretation. I see it's from 2006 or whatever. So I, yeah, I bet yeah, if you I were to write into legal right now with the exact same question, I would be curious to see what they say. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah. And, you know, maybe the most damning piece of uh, information on this entire sheet is the, the address, the state <laughs> in on the upper right hand corner. Oh, yeah. it comes from Washington, D.C. OK, got it. Nothing this is comes out of there. Yeah, this is going to be bollocks. Yeah, have fun. Like you want to uh, check out the tax code when when you're having <laughs> some free time and see how great right. uh, the government is at making coherent um uh decisions dave uh yeah look up communicating for safety it just happened this year uh it, the next one will be in september of next year but it's called communicating for safety uh it's it's hosted by naca our, our union um but you know it's controllers it's uh the agency it's um uh 
contractors, you know, it's the guys that make our equipment. And it's a it's a three day safety conference in Vegas where we talk about a lot of shit. And yeah, usually there's like time for open forum and stuff. But even if not, like there's always, you know, the, the mixers afterwards and stuff where you can pick the brains of a lot of people who know a lot of stuff. And it's not, you know, it's I've put it out to people there before. It's you know, it's not just a controller thing. It's open to pilots too. There is open registration. For anybody, you don't even have to be avi aviation related. It's just you know you you can register and sign up and and, and come, um, and it's it's three days like I said, and we usually talk about a lot of cool shit, um, some dumb stuff. Uh, this year was was kind of dumb, but um, you know there's definitely going to be a lot of people that you that you can talk to and uh, get a lot of information out of. Yeah. I, I will like go back to th having this little community to talk about this is to me invaluable for people that are involved or, you know, watch the streamer in the discord. Like we have for, for anyone that's, that's watching, that's not in the discord. We have these kind of conversations all the time, like in, in the chat, if you have any pilot friends or anyone, you know, that's interested in aviation, um, or a, you know, whoever, anyone that's related to or interested in aviation, um, send them an invite because this kind of stuff like the more conversations like we can have like this that we can have and the further it goes i think the more that information will hopefully propagate into other corners that we don't touch where people can be more safe or more knowledgeable about this kind of stuff because it's there's like nuance and kind of like nerdy and pretty like deep divey and stuff but um like where else are you going to find an air traffic controller and a pilot talking about like regulatory, you know, like this is super interesting and coming up like this letter was even written kind of off of a, a hypothetical question, like all the hypothetical situations that we're talking about, um, like should, could apply to anyone that's listening and, you know, paying attention and could help them in the situation. Like, Hey, I never thought about that. Like, yeah, I, I guess it is just a quick, like, Hey, am I, am I cool through this Delta or am I, am I cool through this corner of the Charlie? All you got to do is ask and all they're going to say is yes or no. And both of these letters become irrelevant. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's dumb that we have to get there with those like you know like i was saying the different air spaces and like the you know uh um uh requirements for entering and whatever sh clearly are kind of improperly in place based off of these things but at least we know yeah moose what's up man fantastic dude uh i was Curious about flying into LAX one day and called SoCal Approach to ask them uh, any advice about it. Uh, most painless way to do it. Um, and the soup I talked to basically said, no, they won't allow that. Couldn't even ask about days or times that might be appropriate. <laughs> you definitely can. Like, we've done it. Like, it's, it's really not th that difficult, honestly. Um, again, they can, all they can do is say no. Um, yeah. But... I don't think they I don't think you can even deny anybody from landing at an airport like that. No, I mean you're going to LAX, you're going to LAX. It doesn't matter if you're in a yeah. 172 or whatever, like if that's your destination, that's your destination. Um well like Brad says, you might need patience because depending on the time, you know, if they're running a big slam, then you're probably going to be waiting because they're not going to delay a super or something for you to get in there. And I think right now actually I think they're down a runway right now. Um, for construction or repaving or something. I don't know. They always seem to be down the runway. Yeah. Even when I was there, um, you know, your best time obviously passed when the COVID was prevalent, but uh, yeah, that was yeah, I, wide they, open there for a while. They don't allow touch and goes. Correct. Yeah. But you're going you're to full stop and I think you're, you're going to have to pay the fees and stuff. Yeah. For, you got to go to Atlantic and you got to pay 70 bucks and like yeah i never yeah. like we did it like it's super cool it's not like it's definitely not my thing like i i'm not i would like to go to Lindbergh. like i've i've never been to Lindbergh, and um i mean i have commercially but that one is kind of like a unique bravo airport but i'm not like 
dying to fly into McCarran or or SFO and maybe even SFO might be that's kind of a cool approach too but like they're just gigantic huge runways you know like it's um yeah yeah they they don't allow uh touch and goes and they also don't allow section landings either <laughs> apparently so yeah that was that was pretty funny <laughs> Yeah, I would love to go to San Diego. Like that that is a very pretty. I mean, that's really should be a Charlie Airport. Like if if John Wayne's a Charlie, uh, yeah. San Diego should be a Charlie. Uh, that's another point of contention with us, but yeah. 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 How, is it busier than John Wayne? It can't be busier than John Wayne. If we're talking just straight carrier traffic, yeah, overall, no. Well, I mean, aren't, aren't you classified by total operations? So carrier ops count, different. It's also partly passenger count, which is why they're Bravo, oh, because yeah. that plays a big part into the Bravo classification. Right, okay. Um, so carrier to carrier traffic, yeah, they have us beat, but not by that much. Now, if you're just talking raw traffic, then yeah, we do like three times the amount every day, right? Yeah. Like, um but that doesn't matter <laughs> got it uh moose this is uh flying monkey he is a uh, air traffic controller tower controller at john wayne airport and we are uh deep diving um nerdy regulatory crap and bitching at approach <laughs> i think i'm gonna hey, cut this up i think this will be really cool buddy oh finbar 64 months Finbar, what is up, man? It's been a while. Cheers. One more drop left. I think I'm going to, like, chop this up because this is, like, a really cool segment talking about this. I think it would be good to have this, like, shareable as its own kind of, like, separate part of the, the video conversation. Um, anything else to add? Any any other, like, Tracons you want to yell at? <laughs> I'm sure uh, we'll have another uh, segment where we can do that. Yeah. Sweet. Um, oh yeah, like we probably not to to do live, but how open would you be to figuring out if we could do like a video in the tower, like an actual coordinated, like little tour and conversation? Is that I, even possible? I would be okay with that. The the management side's the iffy part with that, but of course, you know, we can, we can work around anything. So, yeah, because I, I think I think that'd be cool. I, I got, um, um, oh, you you kind of like this. I got those Rode um, wireless mics. Yeah, those they're super things. really 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 nice. And I originally got the single kit, and they were back ordered on the on like a, a separate single um transmitter and i they finally shipped um shipped it after like months and months um so i'll have two of those wireless mics and it's really easy to shoot kind of run and gun videos um wow. that would be pretty cool to be you know to kind of walk around and talk about stuff with you if, if we can work it out with the powers yeah yeah, yeah. It'd be kind of cool little little outreach thing or something Sweet. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for all the great interactions, uh, questions, and comments and everything on this. It's kind of a, a, not kind of, a definite rabbit hole of weird crap. So um, thank you, everybody, for is this going to work. Nope. Um, just all freaking over the place. There we go. Um, yeah, but yeah, thank you for everyone. You know, the participation tonight was, was super cool. I think this was a very useful conversation and hopefully as a result of it, we're now more, uh, knowledgeable, safe and, uh, considerate pilots. So a <laughs> rabbit hole of weird crap, uh, PW were, you were in it for the long haul, man. I like that. Nice. Well, I am desperate for some dinner. Um, Dave, thanks for um, your participation. That was it's a pleasure as always. Mm -hmm. And, of course, everyone that, that joined, Bradley, with your just 
endless pit of aviation knowledge. <laughs> uh love it okay thank you guys everybody for watching and hanging out tonight i'll see you in the discord if you're not um in it already definitely give that a shot um if it's if you don't like it you can always bail and no one will know so thank you everyone have a great night so